Dit programma wordt u aangeboden door i13 Media, uw livestream specialist van alle soorten events. Goedendag, welkom bij weer een nieuwe uitzending van In Gesprek met Klaas. Vandaag zijn wij te gast bij het Dorstige Gerecht, het oudste cafébar van Tilburg. 120 jaar oud, eh, geweldige locatie. Vandaag heb ik een hele bijzondere gast, eh, overgekomen uit Canada. Eh, was mijn coach sinds 70, 71, 71, 72. Welkom, Tony Kellum. Tony. Thank you. We gaan, we, gaan het, we gaan het doen in het Nederland, eh, Nederlands aankondiging. Ik ga met Tony Engels praten, want hij kent een paar woordjes Nederlands, maar daar komen we tijdens het gesprek wel achter. Dus we gaan nou over in het Engels. Tony, jij explained de the viewers about the interview. Welkom in Tilburg. Thank you. It's been a couple of times that you've been here yep. since you left. You were coach in 70, 71, 72. Yep. But we start at the start. You were born on the 29th of 19, December 1940. <laughs> You immigrated from the UK to Canada. Yep. That's what I didn't know before. Oh, so okay. So it was new. Yeah. So I find out and uh, at your age, you were seven, I think. You seven, went to Canada. Exactly. Uh, how did you get involved with the hockey at that time, at the start? I didn't start skating till I was nine. And I was lucky enough to get with people that would give you the opportunity to skate all the time. And even my first... My first game was in Maple Leaf Gardens. In Toronto. First rink I played with a roof. Okay. Yeah, that was the first arena I played. And after that, it just got better and better. Mm -hmm. So you played, you played a couple of years until 1958, 59, you got a bad injury in your back. Yes, right. That's correct. Then you had yeah. to stop, stop straight un away? Until, yeah, yeah, it was uh, too much pain. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, I went and got the operation. And that straightened out the problem. I've never had the pain since. Okay. No, it's been been good ever since. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Then, how did you get to Holland? So it's it starts. You had an event. Well, you wanted to go to to it, Europe. I with got Carol a, and your wife. I got a phone call uh, one day at home saying, "How would you like to go to Europe to coach hockey?" Mm -hmm. And I said, "Wow, what an opportunity! <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of people would love the opportunity to get this." So anyway, it turned out to be Bolzano okay, in Italy. Italy. Yeah, and uh, I I made a deal with them. I said, I will pay half the plane if you pay, pay the other half. And I was the only one that made that offer. Everybody okay. else wanted full money <laughs> and all this, all this. I was the only one that said, no, I'll, I'll come okay. for the money. I'll pay for it. And what happened was that in the meetings, they came up with the idea that they did not want another coach that was either married or getting married. Okay. Because the wives get so upset early that <laughs> that's too much trouble, Causing right? Problem. Yeah. So it was, uh, you can come, but don't bring your wife. I said, well, I just got married, fresh marriage. So no, I got to I gotta take her. Mm -hmm. So I went back to uh, Canada and I coached uh, Humber College, which is a, a college national team in Ontario, mm -hmm. all the colleges. And uh, it turned out that I got another phone call from uh, Bobby Smolder's dad. Yeah, the That's big Bobby, tall, the big the, tall one. Somewhere in the yeah, middle. Right yes. there, yep. right there, Bob mm -hmm. Smolder's. Mm -hmm. And uh, his boy was playing on the Dixie Beehive Midgets, which was Chicago Blackhawks property. Okay. And, that's, and that's what I was doing. I was coaching and he the was team. playing. Mm -hmm. But he was playing on the fourth line. Okay. And he wasn't getting an opportunity to play. Every once in a while, he would get a shift. So for him, it was a total waste of time. The father being that born in Tilburg, he, the whole family lived in Tilburg. Okay. He knew people. He knew the De Texaco Oil Company. So he calls me up and he says, I've made some arrangements for you to maybe go back to Europe on this team. Mm -hmm. So I flew back. Same deal. I'll pay half. You mm -hmm. pay half. That mm -hmm. and that, Mr. Pelican liked. I understand. Mr. Pelican, the chairman. That, yeah, yeah, that time. yeah. But he mm -hmm. liked the idea. Somebody was helping pay the bill, mm -hmm. and uh, I went there. And uh, 
I got Bobby at six, what was he, six three, six four, two hundred and fifteen pounds, and he could skate, fight, score goals, mm -hmm. and it was funny because he had his two good years here or two three years, and then I called Roger Nielsen back in Peterborough, which was major junior A in yeah. Canada, uh -huh. the best junior hockey. And because uh, Bobby was still only 17, 18 years he old. old, he was yeah, still he was way young. under yeah, 21, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we sent Bobby back to Roger. Roger signed him immediately after one skate. He, signed him. <laughs> he phones me, Tony, how many more Dutchmen have you got over there? I said, how many do you want? He said, send me about 10, 10 guys. <laughs> But that's how it all got yeah. started. And, uh, so and then you came to Holland? Then I came to Holland. How I made you, the deal with Mr. Mr. Pelican. Yeah. But then you got in contact with the, the, the father and mother of Johan, my ex line mate. Yeah. Johan van der Ven. Yeah. So how did that go? Everything everything went well. Uh, I have no bad things to say about anybody mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Everybody had the same purpose. Wanna play, wanna win, do your best. And Pelican in the meeting, the first meeting I had all I want you to do is win. If anybody gets in your way, telephone me. I'll take care of it. And there was one early was problem. Deal. There was one early problem. And I called Pelican and I said, here's my problem. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Wait a minute. He gets off the phone with me, goes somewhere else, takes another phone. Boom, 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 boom. That problem is solved, Mr. Callum. <laughs> that man is no longer on our hockey club. I thought... Okay, you got a lot of power. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what he did to me, and I have so much respect for him. I love that he man. He was a great man. And the thing you would appreciate, I did not know he was a, 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 a tennis player. Tennis player. Right? And the, oh, I'm driving. Oh, thank you, Will. No, I don't need those. And I didn't know he was a tennis player. So I said to him, Mr. Pelican, why don't I play you a game of tennis for $10, Canadian dollars? I know I can beat you. I stood there. <laughs> okay, I heard it, but I didn't see didn't it. See right? the ball. So I said, Manera, are you going to hit? No, no, Mr. Callum, it's already behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, here's your $10. Mm -hmm. I don't play with you no mm -hmm. more. But that's how he treated me, right? He was and he man. gave me, and I wanted, I said, I'm coming to you because I want your advice. I don't want, do want to know what you think. This is all new for me, new mentality. I want to know what I'm to expect and what I think I can do well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest was history. It was history. We, we had two years of winning hockey, right? We wanted everything. Yeah, everything we won that yeah. time. So then, then you got uh, at Johan's place. That's where we... Yeah. How did you get, how did you get in the, at the, the house The problem was that the house that the hockey team was getting for us, the people were still in it. Okay. And they hadn't moved out. Okay. So it was go to the Hotel Riche. Okay, yeah, and, now, on the Heuvel. Here's the story with the Hotel Riche. I go there, and Carolyn had yet to come. Carolyn mm -hmm. was still in Canada, right? She was coming after I thought I had the house, but I, it was a month of living in the Hotel Riche. And uh, people, people would come and visit us and whatever, and I said, okay. But I would always eat downstairs in the dining room. Mm -hmm. Sil silverware, China, yeah, China. Yeah, yeah. everything's top shelf. Eh? Yeah. And... I'm trying to put it all in the straight straight line for you, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm sorry, the I'm, riche. Hes I'm hesitating. The, yeah, ho the riche. hotel riche. Yeah. I go downstairs, and I look at the ham, ham and eggs, right? Yeah, yeah. And I said, I picked up the piece of ham, and I said, I can read the menu through the ham. <laughs> it's so thin, huh? <laughs> Again, Ad Van der Hess, the from the, the, news, from the news news blot, paper, yeah. He gets this story next day in the paper. Coach Tony <laughs> says the, the ham is transparent. <laughs> <laughs> See, these are things you don't even no. know. No. And uh, then the maitre d' says to me, we want you to come into the kitchen. So I go in the kitchen and the chef is there and the chef has got a cleaver in his hand. Mm -hmm. He says, I am the head chef. You, I don't like what you said in the newspaper, the newspaper. right? So... Starting tomorrow morning, you will cut your own ham, you will cook your own eggs, and you can sit at that table and eat it, because I'm not serving you either. So the next morning I go down, I had ham steak <laughs> and three eggs, and they didn't have a toaster. They did the toast on the, 
a platform, eh? a heat, mm -hmm. heat pad. So I said, we got to get a toaster. Mm -hmm. And I did the same thing with Vandervins. I went to the, the V&A &E or whatever, yeah, yeah. and I bought toasters. toasters. One for the hotel, one for Vandervins. Van right? So now we're popping toast. We're in the... <laughs> Yeah, it was so then then you got to, to learn uh, uh, tone and uh, and yoke. Oh yeah, yeah. You had a, I think you had a great time. Yeah, we couldn't we couldn't be treated better. Better, it was better. good, uh, great people. It's like now, like now I'm with, with son. And, and Monique. Oh yeah, we're, we were laughing this morning about something, and he says, "Go away, you bother me," you know. And it's you feel so comfortable. Yeah. They got great hospitality. Oh. Yeah, because like, I yeah. I wanted to stay here all the time. Yeah, I know Tony. We I had know. to make moves, huh? You told and me Saturday. You know what the nice thing is? That you come here and the people accept you. Yeah. And then they treat you like your family. And it's just something that you you want to keep coming back every day. And when I was coaching the kids, mm -hmm. the kids used to line up on the goal line. And I and I forget who the assistant coach was. And I'd say, okay, I want the kids to go to center back, up, blue line back. Okay, all right, go. Mm -hmm. and the kids never mm -hmm. moved. Yeah. I said, "What? What's going on? <clears throat> oh, you've got to speak Netherlands." Yeah. Well, I don't know Netherlands, so yeah. he's whispering in my ear. You know, okay, all of, all the Scots, you yeah. know, boom boom, Akhtar. When I did that, they flew. They flew. For they you. flew. Yeah. yeah, unbelievable. I but remember. I was the only coach, or mm -hmm. one of the only, that ever coached the kids. Mm -hmm. I remember this, Tony, because I was 16 when I got to know you. Yeah, you would and, be there. Uh, I remember from the junior time also when I played the juniors and the first team. You had a book, a book with skills and everything for yeah, hockey. Yeah, how, I wrote the book the in, wrote the in book. Ben Markoven's yeah, office. Yeah, and it was uh, it was Gastetner. Yeah, they came out with the new copy machine. Mm -hmm. You could put the paper in, and it would copy your yeah, print yeah, and your yeah, picture. Yeah. And we did we did something like uh, five six thousand of these books. Yeah, yeah. and I said to you, we got the machine for free. The paper was for free. My time was for free. Mm -hmm. So let's give all the kids a book. Everybody got the book. And then we sold yeah. some for a guilder, two yeah. guilders. Yeah. Harry and an yeah. egg would come in and they'd yeah. show, okay, give me 10 of those. So yeah. we started selling them and put yeah. the money in the coffer. I remember that most of the time of the day you were in the dressing room because you also put the numbers on the skates. And, the, sk and them, the gloves. And, and the gloves. gloves. Yeah. Now, that was, we would call that in Canada Mickey Mouse. But it was important for these guys to feel more important, yeah. just to dress them up. Yeah. They, and I remember the first, I don't, well, I do remember the first time they went out on the ice and people are going, what the hell's going on? The gloves are all blue and gold and the numbers and the skates. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all new to the people, <laughs> right? But the kids got the message, we are special. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, that's, that's how easy it is to make them play that yeah. much better. Yeah. And they did. But this way... The players would fight for you, would go to the utmost, would do their best. But there were also some times that you got a little bit... Remember about the, the slice with the stick uh, somebody, in the dressing room, eh? Yeah. <laughs> there was a couple like that. But I don't know if you were part of the team that we had lost to um, somebody 5 nothing at the end of the first period. And it was for uh, Holland. It was for the, for the Dutch, uh, championship. Dutch Championship. And I had Pat Differ sitting beside me. Yeah. Pat says, what do you think? I says, oh, these guys, these guys are losers. They're born losers. They have no idea what the hell they're doing. So they got no spirit, no, no gumption, no, no fight, you know. And the room got quieter and quieter and quieter. And it was just Pat and I. Pat and I got up and we left the room uh -huh. to, to go to the ice. Eh? All of a sudden, you heard this yelling and screaming from Clay Comma, right? They went out and scored eight goals. And we, we beat them. <laughs> and you beat them like crazy. <laughs> but after the first period, I went to the coach of the other team, and I told them that our kids our kids are finished. He said, you guys, yeah. five nothing. There's no way we can come back from a yeah. five nothing deficit, right? Yeah. So I kissed this guy. And I said, you you're, you're the best. You're the best. <laughs> and I went in, then I went in the room with the hockey stick and Whoa. said, this is the way it's going to be. I'm going to put a mark on your ass with the stick. Yeah. And they went out and they killed him. Yeah. Just killed him. That was great. All that coach did was give me a dirty yeah. look at the end of the game, right? Yeah. And the kids were yeah. all up and down, jumping up and down. <clears throat> Fantastic. Some, some players in the, at, out of that time, because we had a mix of 
Dutch guys, Canadians, Czechoslovakian guys, yeah, yeah. Eh, George, Jerry Tuma, Wenzel Tuma, Ivan Kochanda, yeah. uh, uh, Bulicic, the goalie, Bulicic. Jerry Goebel was on the yeah. team, yeah. Bobby Smulders was on the team. It's It was a great time, Tony. But Very it's like time. George and I discussed today. I said, George, when I said to you and Jerry, who do you want on your wing? Who was going to fit you guys? Mm -hmm. Not you be a puck hog. Mm -hmm. This man has to score 20 goals. Yeah. Yeah. He has to. Or yeah. we, we can't keep him. Yeah. So I said, you've got to have the right mentality to have this guy play. Mm -hmm. So I forget. They took. They tried Cookie Saunders. Mm -hmm. They tried him. Yeah. And he j just didn't. He's still, he's still coaching That's in, what in I the hear. juniors in Heerenveen. That's eh? what I hear. Yeah, 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 somebody said that today. Yeah, in Heerenveen. Which is fantastic. It's fantastic. Still. He's, he's maybe met his... His level, yeah. and that's that's great. Yeah. And uh, when we spent all this time with the youngers, they got better and better and better. Every time we mm -hmm. did a drill, they followed. Yeah, you know. And yeah. I would send the best two or three guys down mm -hmm. the ice first, and especially when you did the octa out backwards mm -hmm. through blue line to blue line and forward again, and keep going. Yeah. The, ki the kids mm -hmm. would watch it, and I said, "Fall, fall down one million times." It doesn't matter. There's mm -hmm. no embarrassment in falling. Mm -hmm. You don't fall if you don't try. Yeah. So yeah. do it. But this, these are sides <laughs> of me that the people never saw. All they yeah. saw was the people behind the bench the, and, 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 and me. Yeah. And, and the players know. Oh, here yeah, goes yeah, yeah. Tony. And number number 21, that Tony going number 21. But they know. Yeah. I don't need the car now. <laughs> I don't need the car. It's okay. You can go home. <laughs> so, you, But you played also five games. I did, and it's the wrong <laughs> lie because I scored five goals in Tilburg oh. for the second division. It's down there, five played I with think one goal or something. Yeah, one goal. Well, that's wrong because I, got, I think I can still find the game sheet in Canada. Okay. Because what happened was the next night we were in Den Haag, mm -hmm. and four guys jumped me in the warm-up because okay. they didn't want me to fight anybody else on their team. And the referee kicked me out of the game. But I think I got two or three of them pretty good. Before what, was I this, said, this is Canada. Welcome to Canada. Your, when you were coaching, was that also the time we played uh, against Raak in Houtrust or not? No. I don't think so. Eh? No. Because no. we only played Heis Oak High then. Yeah. Heis, then Hake. Then Hake. And we played Chamonix. The trips to Chamonix Grenoble also with Joe van Morgo at yep. that time. Was yeah, also I remember Chamonix. Baden Baden, Twee Yep. I yeah. played yeah. all those. The, the, all those. Well, we it's like trip. when we went up to Den Haag, I see this. Guy about the size of Ed Hayraggers, right? It's yeah, yeah. about the size. Okay. Klein your pills. Yeah, and I said, gee, I know this kid. And I yelled, Yop! No, sorry, Ralph. And he turned, and he was another kid from my team in Canada that played going here? to university in, in, Den Haag. in Den Haag. I said, what the hell are you doing here? Yeah. He says, my dad brought me over here because he's with a company from here. And... Uh, He says, they got me in the university and they got mm -hmm. me on the hockey team. And I said, well, keep your head up because I'm going to send everybody after you. <laughs> you call, and I say, trainer, call an ambulance. We're going to need an ambulance for this yeah, guy. Yeah. Well, he thought I was telling the truth. <laughs> Tony, is there, is there any, anything that you say from the years that you were coaching in Tilburg? Not after later, we have, we have a lot of memories. But at the two years that you coached, what was the, the most exciting thing what you have Ooh, been a, through that's a, a tough, question. tough question i think i think the games against the russians well the, the russians were funny because we scored the first goal and From the Joe? newspaper the next morning was tilburg won no holland won uh, russia's won, russia's nothing right yeah. everybody went nuts but from that i've got a picture at home of trichek myself And um, somebody else was in the picture, and I can't think of what it was. But anyway, it was uh, an interview of Trichik. And the question was, from me to him, was, how many goals did we score against you? He says, I remember every goal because you didn't score very many. <laughs> He did that through the translation. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. And a big, big smile. Big smile, like, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know? that, that, that was also the time that Tarasov got a heart attack, eh? That's right. That's right. After seeing us, but when I took him, when I went to the hospital and he was in the hospital, he was shocked that I would come and say hello. Then he said, "What do you want?" And I told him I wanted Tarasov's sweater. Sweater. Oh no, 
Impossible, impossible. Well, we go to the rink the next night, and he was still in the hospital that whole week. Mm. And the trainer comes over to me, and as Tarasov come off the ice, they switched sweaters Switch and gave me still wet. Yeah, you do. Okay. Still wet. Yeah, yeah, Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought, you know, this is great, great, great. And I great. still got it. Yeah. And yes, somebody else did borrow another sweater, another sweater yeah. but it wasn't me. But I know where that is. <laughs> but uh, but I have a picture. It was, it was on the hockey news. <laughs> <laughs> we know but I have a picture of all of us lined up on the blue line and all of them lined up and we can go back and say, I know all these guys. You know, it's not that I know a picture. I know I was on the ice with these guys because the coaches then, they only would not go on the ice, but they would yell a number and the hockey team would go into a drill mm -hmm. under that mm -hmm. number. That's mm -hmm. the way they operated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Tony, it, it was a great time you were having as a coach and I know there's a lot of players who enjoyed the, the time that they played for you. you personally I you know that you meant a lot of me because you got me the invitation to Sault Ste. Marie hockey camp with Jack de Heer too bad that uh, my dad uh, yes. told me to go back home well see I said that the other night somebody I said the shoe only opens the door mm. so far yeah. so you have to make that decision and there's so many boys that leave home To go there, to go, up, go their yeah. goal, their yeah. dream. Yeah. And if you don't make it, you come home. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. But many times the parent will grow up yeah, 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 while yeah. the boy is in camp. Yeah, yeah. And then if, if he comes back, it's a totally different high, ice hockey yeah. term. Yeah. They understand what the kid wanted yeah. and what the yeah. kid tried for because yeah. it's such a small world. Assistant coach with Wayne Hunter on the World Championships. My first one, Amir Kuryachuk. That was different. That was different. I, and I don't say this detrimentally, Mr. Hunter had no experience except being an assistant coach in the University of BC. Mm -hmm. So he never ran the bench. Mm -hmm. He wasn't involved with changing players or whatever. And he just was there as a backup to the to the uh, uh, coach. Yeah, yeah. But a great guy. You know, we lived together in, to in Tony and Yokos. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a lot of good parties in there. But uh, yeah, good guy. And uh, every once in a while, he's got a, they've got a donut franchise now out in British Columbia. Okay. And I think they've bought either four or five stores selling the donuts. The donuts. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's a big business in Canada. That's a big money maker. Some old pictures, and it, this is only oh, half is Ward Laurie. This yeah. is Ward. Ward, yes. Ward with you. He tried to... He tried at that. Was that at the 75th games? I think, yeah. 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 Or correct. 75th year? Yeah. He Reunion. Said, Reunion 75th He said years something to me about, I hope they didn't tell you that I was old because my hair is white. He says, I'm still young enough to play. And I said, you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> This one with Goose, who passed away. Yes. No. And, uh, and Jack, Jack the Heer. Let me, can I borrow this for a minute? Put them here, Tony. That's that's, I think that was also with the reunion. No, that's, that's, that's Jack. Jack the Heer. Holy shoot. That's Jack. He's from Latvish. Still contact with him. That was Gusje Bakker. Can I tell you now that he gave me his jacket that, that's, from the Tilburg okay, yeah, team? Okay, he was, he, he was team uh, He was very sick. Team yeah? manager. But yeah. he was very sick and he But passed anyway, away I too said bad. to him. Feel much too young. I like said Mike. to him, I understand you're with equipment and stuff. Mm. I want to buy a jacket. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you can't. I says, I want to buy a jacket. Mm. I think there's one in my car. He went outside the ice pond. He came back yeah. in with the jacket in a bag. That jacket is now hang hanging in Canada in great pride. Yeah. So I accepted it from him. I think this is a picture of one of your best friends. Johnny oh. Mac. We we sat seen, we seen it Saturday on the re a little reunion we had. and I, I have more love for him than anybody else. Mm -hmm. That I know. Yeah. He was such a funny man. He still is funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so sick. He's, and he, but his, his humor. He just. Well, like I, to, I told you about scoring the goal, eh? Uh -huh. he, yeah, yeah. He scored the goal up here, but he was aiming down at the bottom along the ice. Yeah, he was so pissed off with that. Oh, yeah. Johnny, you stupid fool. He's talking to himself. <laughs> I said, Johnny, drink more. Drink more. <laughs> drink more, smoke a bigger cigar. That's what you got to do. You know. yeah. Tony, um, one other thing. I find out in Canada, there's supposed to be a, a rumor or a saying that they call you Mr. C. 
Yes. What's this? Okay, when I went with the Toronto Red Wings, mm -hmm. everybody was Red Wings. We were, we were part of the Red Wing organization as kids, even as me coaching younger. And everybody got to wear the official uniforms of the Detroit Red Wings. And every team in Toronto that played AAA, mm -hmm. the, the highest amateur, mm -hmm. all played in NHL uniforms. And I went to see a kid. I was phoned and I was scouting for Detroit. I'm looking at 14-year-olds, two of them over six feet, almost okay. 200 pounds. Four. And I saw the one kid that I was sent to look at, but I see a number 14. And I said to somebody, I wasn't allowed to talk to them. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't go to you or say, my name is and here's my business card. I couldn't do that. So you would lose the opportunity of getting you as a player. But this was the first year you could go anywhere. You could leave Toronto and go to any team you wanted mm -hmm. to. So quickly, I'll get it as quick as I can. I loved the kid they sent me to look at. And he was a Greek boy, George Nistis. Mm -hmm. And the kid, the other kid, was Nobili, an Italian. Mm -hmm. yeah. And both of them just over six feet. They played together for four years on my team, Red Wing team. Each year, they both scored 40 goals or more. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I put a guy with them, but they couldn't keep up with those two guys. Yet they fed him the puck all the time. But he, he started to, his parents told him to keep the puck. Don't pass the puck. <laughs> so I, get, I got rid of him. Yeah, I got yeah, rid of him, got another player. Out. He went, he played on 14 different amateur teams before they finally said, hey, the parents would not stop the talking, oh, no. do this, do that. His uncle played for the Montreal Canadiens. They wanted the kid to play for the Montreal. Mm. Kid was about this big, about that big around, mm. but he had skill. Mm -hmm. But he had it for himself because mm -hmm. the parents said, don't pass. Mm. Don't pass. Tony, we can, we can talk for hours. I know this, and there's a time that we have to... Why, oh, they got to go home? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't care. I hope that you and Carolyn stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. I hope to see you a lot of times more we'll back in Tilburg. We'll be back in two years. In two years when we have the reunion, the 85 years Tilburg Trappers. Hope to see you and Carolyn. I hope so too. Good health. And uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. It was a great time. I great hope I did the job. Excellent. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Goed, dit was het van vandaag. Hartelijk bedankt voor het kijken en graag tot een volgende keer. Vond je dit een leuke video? Bekijk dan ook de andere afleveringen van het programma Klaas in gesprek met.